Step down for resumption next sitting day. Call on government order of the day numbers one and two. Employment Relations Amendment Bill, Committee Stage. Accounting Infrastructure Reform Bill, Committee Stage. I declare the House in Committee for consideration of the Employment Relations Amendment Bill and the Accounting Infrastructure Reform Bill. Mr Chairman. Speaker. The House and Committee on the Employment Relations Amendment Bill and the Accounting Infrastructure Reform Bill. Members, we turn first to the Employment Re Relations Amendment Bill. The question is that Part 1 stand part. Mr Chairman. Uh, the Honourable Mark Woodhouse. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And as this is my first intervention of the 51st Parliament, can I just take a little bit of time to welcome colleagues back to the House and to uh, congratulate you and acknowledge you as this House uh, Deputy Speaker for the 51st Parliament. Can I also welcome those new MPs, particularly those who have uh, had their maiden speeches this afternoon. I think colleagues will agree the quality of the speeches and the calibre of our new intake on both sides of the House is particularly impressive. Uh, I have the the very good duty, I think, as Minister for Workplace Relations and Safety to continue the excellent work of the Honourable Simon Bridges, the previous custodian of this bill, uh, and I want to acknowledge the very good work that he has done. I also want to acknowledge the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee of the 50th Parliament, who considered this bill and, of course, uh, reported it back with amendments. Um, I, I acknowledge uh, that chair of that committee, David Bennett, and want to congratulate him on his appointment today as the chair of the Finance and Expenditure Select Very Committee. Much. Very well deserved. After six years as the chairman of the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee, a uh, committee I very much enjoyed being a member of in the 49th Parliament, a rather split personality committee where we had such strong and collegial relationships on those things uh, such as uh, immigration, transport safety, uh, and then um, perhaps not quite the same level of collegiality around ACC and employment law. Uh, nevertheless, it was a very effective committee then, and I'm sure it will be under the able chairmanship of uh, Jonathan Young in this parliament. Mr Chairman, uh, the Employment Relations Amendment Bill delivers on this government's manifestos in both the 2011 and 2014 uh, election campaigns. It is designed to enhance uh, and create a more flexible workplace relations environment. And it continues this government's strong focus on reduction in compliance cost and unnecessary burdensome regulation. It does some very small but effective changes to flexibility in, uh, in bargaining, in entry into uh, collective agreements, in the ability of employers to opt out of multi-employer collective agreement uh, and a number of other technical changes. And it adds some flexibility uh, to an employee's opportunity to request more flexible working arrangements. That uh, ability is currently uh, available to employees of people who have caregiving responsibilities. And I'm, I note that 70 per cent of employers have actively considered and allowed some form of flexibility uh, under that. So this is something that I think will be in, uh, appreciated by employers and employees alike as we extend that to a far wider range uh, of reasons to have flexibility. It uh, provides, I think, a very sensible opportunity for employees and employees to agree uh, on, on flexibility in work um, breaks and meal breaks. Now I want to acknowledge the many people around the country who have emailed me this afternoon their views uh, and their belief, uh, both on an email and on Facebook, that this somehow is going to be the removal of the right of employees to take a tea break. Well, Mr Chairman, nothing could be further from the truth. And the irrational rant from the meerkats on the other side at the mere sniff of this kind of exploitation that they claim is there 
is unfortunate and untrue. We know that there are situations in the workplace, including workplaces I have managed, where there are sole charge operations for which it is necessary and appropriate to have some flexibility in the rest and meal breaks. Whether it is the two registered nurses on night shift at the weekend at small surgical hospitals who for safety reasons cannot leave the ward at two o'clock in the morning, and I as an employer gave them a meal, a meal allowance and some extra um, uh, uh, time in recognition of that inability, why you would want to leave and go downtown at Dunedin at two o'clock on a Monday morning as anybody's guest. Um, but indeed, that was the flexible arrangements that we had before this law change. It's probably still there and probably in breach of the Employment Relations Act. It's unnecessary and this brings back some sense to that. The sole charge air traffic controller at small airports that again, for safety reasons, cannot leave. The night shift supervisor at the 24-hour service station, the sole charge, Mr Chairman. Honourable Michael Woodhouse. The sole charge person who, for very good reasons, wants to have that flexibility. And I think we patronise employees by pretending that they cannot negotiate with their employer fair outcome. It has to be done with the agreement of the employer and the employee together. That is the modern workplace, not the cloth cap wearing rhetoric that I think we're going to hear during the committee stage of this bill. Now, Mr Chairman, very good improvements to the bill were made by the committee as it came out uh, and were confirmed in second reading. But there are a couple of amendments that I will be introducing under government SOP. Uh, firstly, and I want to acknowledge the Honourable Peter Dunn for his suggestions around the cessation of bargaining, the ending of bargaining, and ensuring, albeit that I think that the bill was pretty clear about this, it's certainly uh, appropriate to strengthen, make absolutely clear that the Employment Relations Authority needs to be satisfied that both parties to the ending of the negotiations have acted in good faith and that the cessation of um, the negotiations w should not take place if one party has not acted in good faith. So the Honourable Peter Dunn has proposed an SOP, the Government is happy to see that in place. Part 6A has been a fairly contentious uh, part of the Employment Relations Act for the last nine or ten years. Some sensible amendments, in my view, to acknowledge uh, the burden of Part 6A on very small businesses, SME, uh, with employees under, uh, of 19 staff or less, uh, and to provide clarity around the obligations on the outgoing employer and the incoming employer under a restructure so that employees have not enough time to consider their options and that the incoming employer uh, has a clear understanding of the time frame for the getting of the information uh, and understanding of what employees he or she is to take on. The last amendment under SOP, Mr Chairman, uh, is to the provisions uh, under the Employment Relations Authority and the ability for uh, the powers of the Chief of the Employment Relations Authority to be delegated. Um, in the absence of this, and in the absence of the Chief of the Authority, if it were to occur, that could cause some problems with decisions that are required to be made by that Chief. So I think that's a sensible and pragmatic uh, change. Mr Chairman, this is a good bill. This is a bill that delivers on the promises this Government has made in the last two election campaigns. We have the mandate to pass it, we have the numbers to pass it. It will improve the workplace by providing flexibility for both employers and employees. Uh, I expect that to be robustly debated this evening, and I look forward to that. Ian Lee is Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. And uh, given this is the first time that I've spoken whilst you're in the Chair, may I congratulate you uh, on your election to that role. Sir, I hope that members opposite uh, enjoyed their meal break. because. Uh